All right, guys, today we are going to be doing some box plots. So this is super exciting. Um, you've probably heard of a box and whisker plot before. Um, that is the same thing as a box plot. And what it does is it displays the five number summary. And so what it does is it makes a box in where the IQR is, the Q1 and the Q3. We haven't talked about what that means yet, but we'll get to it in a second. And then there's a whisker that goes to the minimum number and to the maximum number. So just keep that in mind. Um, the five number summary is how we construct a box plot. And the five number summary is the five important numbers of a range of data um, values. And it starts with the minimum number. And then the Q1, which happens to be the median of the lower half of data. And then the middle number is the median. And so keep in mind, it's commonly confused here. It's not the mean in the five number summary. It is the median. And then the Q3, which is the median of the upper half of data, followed by the maximum number. So these are your five number summaries. The IQR represents the range of the middle 50% of the data. The formula for that is just Q3 minus Q1. That's where you make your box in your box and whisker plot, and we will construct one a little bit later. Um, an outlier, so we refer to the word outlier quite a bit, and we have so far in this chapter as well, but we haven't really talked about how to find what an outlier is and what the formula is. It's any data value that falls outside a certain range, and there are formulas for that. So maybe something important to highlight, Q1 minus 1.5 IQR or Q3 plus 1.5 IQR. So this is the formula to figure out if you have any outliers or not. So if you have a number that's really, really, really low and it's far away from all of your other data points, what you should do is take whatever the Q1 value is and then also compute the IQR and multiply it by 1.5 and then figure out if that number is beyond whatever this computation is. It does need to be outside that number. Um, it can't be equal to it. It does need to be like farther away from it. So just keep that in mind. Um, another word that we use for those, these are called fences. So like the upper fence is going to be represented by this. And so that's the fence, and if you're outside the fence, then you're considered an outlier. Same thing here, this is the lower fence, and if you're outside the fence, you're considered um, an outlier. Not if you're on the fence, so not if it's an equal number, just keep that in mind. It has to be beyond. And we have this thing called a modified box plot, and so in your calculators, if and when we ever do some stuff graphing calculators and um, this chapter, um, you have to choose modified box plot because that's the one that shows the outliers as an asterisk. Regular box plot don't show the outliers as asterisks. Um, another thing, some textbooks and some calculators and sometimes you'll see an asterisk as a star or a box. Um, just keep that in mind. Um, and then the range is the maximum minus the minimum, okay? And so what we have here is our very first example. We're going to do um, some box plot stuff for it. And we're given the weights of 10 offensive linemen from the Cowboys football team 2009. A little bit outdated data. And these are linemen, so there's some pretty big dudes. And here are their 10 weights. And so to come up with a five number summary, the best thing I'm going to do is definitely put these numbers in order. And so here I actually wrote them in order so I can easily tell my minimum, my maximum, and other stuff in between. So since we have 10 data values here, I do not have a middle number, which means I'm going to have to average these two together. So that's just 317 and a half. That's going to be my median. Um, the good news is um, if you look at these bottom five, the lower half of the data set, I do have a middle there, and this is going to be my Q1. And since there are five numbers up here, I do have a middle of these five numbers. It's this one. So that's going to represent my Q3. And then my maximum, obviously, is 353. Okay, so I've written out what my five number summary is. Um, the minimum number, the maximum number, definitely easiest to tell. The median, I do not have a middle number, so I had to average these two together. That's how I got 317.5. I did have a middle number of my lower five. It was this one. This is my Q1, and this one is my Q3. And so the next question says calculate the IQR, and what does it tell us? So the IQR is represented by Q3 minus Q1. So it's just a very simple formula to do. Um, Q3 minus Q1 is going to be 326 minus 311, which gives us 15. That's my IQR. This represents the range of the middle 50% of 
lineman's weights. Okay, so what that means is my 50% of the guys in the middle of the pack of linemen are within 15 pounds of each other. Okay, so that's the middle 50% of the data, which is in between 326 and 311. That range is 15. Keep in mind, I have seen a couple multiple choice questions where it asks for the IQR, and sometimes it, um, like one of a multiple choice answers, gives you two numbers like this, and a different multiple choice answer gives you the actual IQR, which is 15. The IQR is a number. It is a subtracted number. Take your 326 minus 311, it equals 15. It's a specific number, IQR. Do you suspect any outliers? Verify if there are or aren't any outliers. Here's how we decide if we have any outliers in this. We use the formula, which is way up here. Um, I highlighted both of them. So what I'm gonna do is first calculate the fences, which is using these two formulas, and then see if there are any numbers beyond outside the fences, okay? So the first part of the outlier formula is Q1 minus one and a half IQR. So I'm going to plug in those numbers. Remember my Q1 was 311 minus 1.5 and my IQR was 15. And so that gives me 311 minus 22.5. That's what one and a half times 15 is, which equals 288.5. And so the very similar formula for the upper fence, but that's gonna be Q3 plus one and a half times the IQR. So again, I'm gonna plug in those numbers. Remember my Q3 was 326 minus one and a half times 15. And that's gonna give me 326 plus 22.5, which gives me 348 and a half. And so these are my, this is gonna be referred to as my upper fence and my lower fence, kind of like I said earlier. So this is the lower fence, AKA the cutoff, and this is the upper fence, AKA the cutoff. And just so you know, these are the numbers that we are comparing to our list of weights of linemen up here, all these guys. So I do not have a lower outlier because my minimum number is 307, but my lower fence is 288.5. There are no dudes up here that weigh less than 288.5. Question is, what if they equaled 288.5? That's still not beyond the fence. It's not outside the fence, it's on the fence. So that would not be considered an outlier. It does have to be beyond that number, not equal to that number to be considered an outlier. Okay, so I'm gonna write no low outliers. And so let's compare our numbers to the upper fence now. So this is the upper fence, this is the cutoff, and I do have someone that weighs more than the upper fence. So he's outside the fence, you guys. This guy is for sure an upper outlier. So I do have 353 is an upper outlier. It is a good idea to specify upper or lower. Um, just kind of keep that in mind. If any of you are interested in taking AP stats later, that's a good thing to, to designate, whether it's a low outlier or an upper outlier, because it could be either, okay? Um, so we do have the, two, or the 353. This guy is an outlier, good for them. Now it says draw a box plot. So here, maybe you have forgotten since you learned what a box plot was at the very beginning. I'm gonna label a brief x-axis down here. Uh, my minimum was 307, so I'm gonna start at 305 and I'm gonna count by fives up to, my max is 353, so I'll go to 355. Just so I have nice even numbers. Um, what I've said in the past was that maybe you decided to label your x-axis a little bit differently than the person sitting next to you. That is okay, not a huge deal. Um, some of you, all your box plots will probably look a little bit different, that's okay. I'm gonna go by fives. And so here's what my x-axis looks like. And so the minimum number that I'm gonna put as my first dot, my minimum was 307. That's the first number of the five number summary. So I'm gonna put a dot for that, just a little bit past 305. Um, my next number in the five number summary was 311. So a dot goes there, a little bit past 310 obviously. Um, the median was 317.5. I'm looking right up here at my five number summary. Um, 317.5 is between 315 and 320, again, obviously. Um, Q3 was 326, so that's going to go about here. 
and my maximum number was 353, so I'm going to put a dot there. But then remember we decided that the maximum number was an outlier because he was beyond my upper fence. So what I'm going to do is change that to an asterisk. And I'm going to put a dot at the next smallest number. So that doesn't change my minimum, or my maximum, excuse me. My maximum is still 353. Even though it's an outlier, he is the heaviest dude in this line, period. Um, but my last dot is going to be at 338. So that goes right here. And the way that you construct your box plot is you put a box around the Q1 to the Q3, like so. And that represents our IQR. A line goes through the median, and then you extend your whiskers in either direction to the other two dots. And so if you have outliers, those are noted as asterisks. You could have also had an outlier over here, but we didn't have one in this data set. Anyway, so just to clarify, this is still the maximum, even though it's an outlier. It just changes the way that we graph our box. Um, that just means that my whisker stops at the next highest number, but this number is still my maximum even though it's an outlier. The last part asks you to label the box plot with percentages according to the definitions of Q1 and Q3. And so what that means is, you guys, 25% um, of the linemen fall between the minimum and the Q1. That is what the Q1 means. If it is the 50 percentile of the lower half of data, what that means is 25% of the linemen fall between Q1 here and here. And then again, 50% of the data is in this box right here. And so that's split up evenly since this is the median, this is 25% and this is also 25%. And then we have 25% out here on the end, the last whisker, and that is the space between the Q3 and my maximum is way out here. 25% falls into that category. So anytime you're looking at box plots, um, it's a common mistake to think that because this whisker is longer than this one, that this one has more data in it, and that's not accurate. That data is just a little bit more spread out. They still represent 25% for each of these um, parts in the box plot. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then we're going to do some practice problems in class tomorrow, so um, hopefully you've gotten down all the important info and this has refreshed your memory a little bit. But bring questions to class and we'll do a little bit of practice. Have a great night, you guys.